Listen to these words inspired from Matthew 11. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you, put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear and this burden is light. Church Christ calls us to come to worship, to rest from the things that are troubling us, to learn what Christ can teach of life, to realize what we can offer to others, and so to return into the world to serve. Let us worship God together this morning. sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come near earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow the heaven So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your hope for the hopeless and all those who stray come sit at the table come taste the grace there's rest for the weary rest that endures earth has no sorrow the heaven can cure so lay down your burden no sorrow that heaven can heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal sing it out with me loud so lay down your burdens lay down your shame all who are broken So 
Church, let us pray together at this time. O oh Lord, we praise you today, for you are compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. So we come to your mercy throne in confidence, not in ourselves, but in you, our rock, our redeemer, our fortress and strength. O oh Lord, we thank you that even in the midst of the storms of life, you give us a calmness and hope, knowing that the Lord is in his holy temple and that you are on your heavenly throne. You observe everyone on earth and your, eye, and your eyes examine everyone. Thank you, Lord, that you are ruling the world, that you have a plan. And even though at times we don't always understand your plan, you have given us faith to believe and know that everything will be okay. And Lord, forgive us for our doubt and in, ter in times of uncertainty, we panic and forget that you are in control. Forgive us for trying so hard to stay in control of our own lives. Forgive us for our lack of faith. When the world seems out of control, then we feel like we're not in control. Forgive us for our pride and not trusting you as a child trusts in a parent. Oh Lord, you are in your holy temple. And we thank you that you have given us direct access to your temple through your son, Jesus Christ, that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Thank you, Jesus, that you are now the temple and we can come to you through prayer through our faith in the gospel, and through the word of God. Help us encounter you, Holy Spirit. And thank you that we can know and enjoy your presence anytime, anywhere, because the Lord is in his holy temple. Oh Lord, we want to remember and give thanks to those who gave their lives to secure our freedoms. And we want to pray for the families that are mourning their deaths. Would you be with them, especially as we take this time to remember and honor those who have served. Oh Lord, we pray for the Clemmers family as a volcano erupted near where they serve in Africa, Lord. We pray for your protection and direct intervention that you will be with the Clemmers family as well as all the people in that area who have been affected by the volcano. May your peace, your recovery, and your protection be upon them. Oh Lord, we pray for all those who might be struggling in this time, whether that may be medical issues, financial problems, mental issues, or any other issue. You know our struggles, O oh Lord. So we pray for your mercy and grace to be poured in our lives. We pray for your healing in our lives. We pray that faith would be increased in our lives. And we pray that we would turn to you in this struggle, knowing that our purpose and identity is in you. And so the world can take away a lot of things from us, but nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. So help us as your children spread that love to one another, to listen to one another, to learn from one another, and to mourn with one another. Oh Lord, help us be attentive to your presence today. Help us hear your word and, uh, through Pastor Joe, and may you speak through him as he points others to Christ. And if there is anyone who needs to hear your word today. Soften the hearts and let us hear your word so that we may draw into relationship with you today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now let us pray the way the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand. Because of what I've done, but because of who you 
That is an amazing truth, Lord, that if we claim your son Jesus as our Savior, we take him as our Lord, that God, we have been set free. Lord, we have a new identity. We are your children with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities, God. Lord, thank you. 
I thank you, God, for the grace that you showed to me. And I ask God for your forgiveness for the many times where I withhold it from other people. God, forgive us that we can be so quick to accept the gift of salvation, the gift of your grace and mercy, God, but then, if we're honest with ourselves, feel that someone else doesn't deserve it. God, help us as your children to realize that in your house there are many rooms, not just for us, but for others, for our coworkers, our family, our neighbors, the people who cut us off in traffic, God, that for all of the people who maybe we think they are too far outside of the reach of your hand, forgive us, God, for putting you in a box. Forgive us, God, for seeing you as too small. God, I thank you for your word and the stories in the Gospels that tell us of all the people who Jesus touched and whose lives, God, were trash before he met them. Thank you, God, for showing us tax collector, sinner, prostitute, no matter who it was, God, that with an encounter with Jesus Christ, their life got lifted out of the mud and they were given a new life, a new name, a new identity as children of God. And Lord, I thank you for doing that for me. I thank you for doing that for my brothers and sisters here, God. And I pray that you will give us all a heart, Lord, that desires to have other people know that amazing grace. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will work in and through our Pastor Joe this morning as he preaches your word, God. Help us not be closed off, but be open. And may our hearts be fertile soil for the seed of your word this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Anyone here having a Memorial Day get-together? Uh, see, no one wants to, oh, one person raised their hand. A lot of people don't want to raise their hand because they're like, oh, does that mean I have to invite Pastor Joe because he knows now that I've got, because you know we pastors, if there's food and it's free, we're there. Um, no, Memorial Day gatherings, it's good. It's time to spend you know, with family and friends. But I want you to think about something today, and that is uh, who would... Who would you not want to show up? I mean, yeah, it's kind of funny when you think about that, but, but really, who, you know, because some people you invite, for the best if you're inviting the neighborhood, who would you not want to show up? Maybe it's a cousin who just got out of prison. You feel weird about that, so I hope, hope Cousin Eddie doesn't show up. Or maybe it's an, an alcoholic neighbor who, when it comes to these things, just gets trashed and makes a scene. Or maybe it's the relative who, who tries to be more woke than anyone else, explain that capitalism is, is, is the tool of the oppressor. Or maybe it's that friend who wears the Make America Great Again hat and goes on and on about the election being stolen. Who would you say, man, I hope that person doesn't show up? I know they're invited, but I really hope they don't show up. And now imagine that person having their own party packed with people just like them, and they invite you. Would you go? Would, would Jesus go? Now, um, we're going to look at a, a scripture today that suggests that, yeah, uh, Jesus would go, especially if one of those people had started to follow him and had a party with their friends. We're in this series called Encountering Jesus, and in it we are looking at many different people, many different people encountering Jesus, tax collectors and um, the the religious and skeptical, and Jesus affected each one in a very profound way. And today we're looking at how Jesus encounters those types of people 
that you don't want to be around. And yet, he changed their lives. And yet, he gave them a new name. Yet, he called them to be children of God, even though you may not have called them to your party. The context here is Jesus, he's gaining popularity. We're in Luke chapter 5, verses 27 through 32 is the scripture we're reading. And Jesus, he's gaining popularity. People are following. He's healing people. He is teaching people. And it's growing so much that the religious leaders are starting to take notice. And they're a little bit leery of him. And early in chapter 5, Jesus calls some of his disciples, he calls his plain fishermen, Now, not the people you would really start a new religious movement with, but, you know, they're fishermen, they're okay. But today, the person he calls to be his disciple is truly scandalous. Luke 5, verse 27. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his house. And there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at the table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not called to I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So, wow, he, he calls a tax collector to be his follower. Now, tax collectors in that day were notorious for using the Roman system to enrich themselves. Okay, you could say that being a tax collector could really take a toll on your reputation. <laughs> Yeah, they were considered traitors, all right? They were considered traitors both religiously and um, nationally, right? Because they're helping the Romans, the pagan Romans, and they're using their power to get rich themselves. So the tax collectors were kind of the people that righteous people wouldn't want to hang out with, where most people really wouldn't want to hang with. So Jesus, he is a religious leader He's gaining popularity. He says to one of these suspect tax collectors, follow me. Follow me. I want you to be a part of my core as I usher in the kingdom of God. And this encounter with Jesus, I mean, Levi had probably encountered religious leaders before. But the encounters didn't go like this. The encounters were usually those religious leaders wanting Levi, wanting nothing to do with Levi. Levi, get away. He was used to being excluded, not included and invited, but that's what Jesus is doing. And when given the opportunity to follow Christ and the path Christ is laying before him instead of the one that he had been living, Levi, he doesn't seem to hesitate. He drops everything and goes and and begins to joyfully follow Jesus. And I say joyfully because he throws a party. See, that's the thing is sinners rejoice when they encounter Jesus. Do we have any sinners here who's rejoiced because they've encountered Jesus? Amen? Amen. Now, those who considered themselves religious and righteous, they see Levi in that morally suspect crowd that he's hanging around with, eating with Jesus, and they're a bit disgusted. And they say, wait, how could Jesus, Jesus claims to be a righteous man, how could he eat with such unrighteous and just gross people? How could he go to their party?" And see, at at that day and age, it's not when you ate a meal with someone, you had table fellowship with them. In that culture, it was more than just a meal. It was intertwining of life, of relationship. It was it was saying, I'm okay with these people. It's socializing with them. And this is why 
the Pharisees, they would not share a meal with people like Levi because they wanted to entangle their lives and reputations with the good people, with the righteous people, with the people who went to temple. And they, they, they saw sin as kind of like a sickness, a virus where they can catch it, and so they don't want to bring it to their social circles. So that's why they wouldn't eat with these tax collectors and sinners. And so they couldn't believe that Jesus would be associating with them, having table fellowship with them. And when they questioned Jesus, well, Jesus, why? Why would Jesus eat with such people? Jesus says, well, I, I've come for people like this. I've come to call them into healing and repentance and into God's kingdom. Now, for the writer of Luke, so Luke and his gospel, Levi here, he embodies that morally suspect and rejected person being invited to follow Jesus. Because, well, how does Jesus end? Jesus says, I'm I'm here to call sinners to repentance. And what did we just see? A sinner named Levi being called to Jesus And he drops everything and follows him. That's repentance. That's what repentance is. It's a churchy word, but really it's you're going one direction, and then you you turn from that, and now you're going in the direction that you're called. And so Jesus called to him. Levi repented and followed him. And so he is an embodiment of this concept here. And that's good news. Because Jesus, it shows that he is expanding the boundaries to the kingdom of of God, of who can encounter, who can be a part of God's people, who can be called a child of God, like we just sang. And Jesus is saying, basically, la di da everybody who comes and follows me. And that is good news. So if you are here or watching online and you're not the religious type, if you think the kingdom of God is closed to people like you, if religious people, even Christians have said, yeah, church, kingdom of God stuff, that's not really for people like you. Jesus is saying, don't listen to them, follow me. And respond to that call. Because anyone who follows Jesus can be called a child of God. Not based on what we do, but based on what he has done. And Jesus says, I will come and I will fellowship with you. I will heal your soul. I will forgive your sins. And I will give you a new life in God's kingdom. So Levi, he encountered Christ, and he redirected his life. And that can be your encounter today as well. You can go from being unwanted to invited, unwanted to welcome into God's kingdom. And so maybe that is you today, and if so, follow Christ. He's calling to you now. You're here, you're listening, because God is calling to you to be his child. doesn't matter what you've done where you've been, he gives new life. He brings healing. He came exactly for sinful people. Now, I want to be, you know, confess, I, I think that in America today, there is a small portion, I don't know, 20%, I'll say, that, that don't feel like, I can't follow God. Uh, he would never accept me. But I think most of us actually have the opposite problem. And that is that We don't struggle with, oh, would God accept me? No, we feel we're entitled to God's acceptance. We assume, of course, Jesus would want to hang out with me, right? We we assume, of course, Jesus would want me to follow him. After all, that's what we all want, right? We want followers on our social media. and, And so we just assume, yeah, of course, Jesus would want me to follow him. We don't have that attitude like, uh, Levi, the tax collector, but also remember Peter. When God called Peter, what what did Peter do? Do you remember? He fell at his feet and said, Lord, leave me. I'm a sinful man. I I can't follow you. I'm not worthy to follow you. Most of us don't have that problem. Most of us trying to size Jesus up. Oh, is he worthy? Not am I worthy? We usually have the, the different problem. You see, we don't see ourselves as sinners. No, we see ourselves as righteous, although we wouldn't say it that way. No, normally we would be, you know, our false humility would say, no, no, I'm a pretty good person. Uh, Jesus would want to hang out with me. Well, if that's our attitude, then I submit to you today, religious person, and I include myself in that, that our attitude probably is more reflective of the Pharisees than of Levi. 
Because what did Levi do? He said, wait a minute, Jesus, I can be a, in your family. I can be a, a part. Yeah, I'm going to joyfully throw it all away and just follow you. Whereas the Pharisees, they had an interest in Jesus. They were curious about Jesus. Is this a religious guy? Uh, I'm curious. But not Jesus, how in the world would you even accept me? Many of us have that attitude, mild interest in Jesus, as opposed to joyful, repentant following of Jesus. And so when Jesus answered to the Pharisees, when, when they asked, well, you know, why are you eating with tax collectors and sinners? There's a hint of irony in Jesus' answer. Don't you see it? In verse 31, it says, Jesus answered them. He says, oh, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. See, Jesus here, there's irony. He's saying, oh, oh, I'm not here for righteous people like you. I'm here for sinful people like them. So they will encounter me. They will receive all that is, it comes with being a child of God and a new person in the kingdom of God. But you don't really need that, do you? No, I've come for people like these. I've come, but not the righteous. Not the righteous. And I say that because in Matthew's recounting, so in Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the synoptic gospels because they all have, they have a lot of the same um, events that happen and they tell them often in slightly different ways. And in Matthew's retelling of this event, in chapter 9, verse 13, Jesus says this. It says, go and, well, he says, for I came to call the righteous, not the uh, uh, righteous, but sinners. Look what he says before that in 9, 13. He says, go then and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. So he's quoting the Old Testament when, when he says, uh, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, where God, he castigates religious people for doing rituals, but neglecting showing mercy and love to people. And so the implication is that these religious people, these religious leaders, they don't know the heart of God. And they themselves need to repent and turn towards God's mercy over just religious sacrifices to him. So they have symptoms. They have symptoms in their heart that say they need the great physician, but they don't see it because they are righteous. Oh, sure, Levi and those people, they need forgiveness. They need a physician, but we're okay. We're okay. But they had symptoms in their heart that said they needed just as much forgiveness and healing as Levi. They just, again, didn't recognize it. Is that you, religious person? We're all here in church, so that means all of us, right? Talking to me, talking to you. Are you talking to me? I'm talking to you and me. Is that our heart? That Jesus, his healing, his forgiveness... Isn't that, I don't need it that much. That's not for me. I don't need a doctor. How many of us stubbornly refuse to go to the doctor? Right? Yeah, that's me. It's me. You know, I was reading about a fellow who was, was having some real issues with digestion, and all. I won't go into it, but he just couldn't keep anything down. He was having some, something was going on in his digestive system. And he goes to the doctor and it turns out that there's this rare um, uh, disease, if, a tick-borne disease where uh, you, you get, become allergic to eating red meat. I don't know if you've heard of that, but this is a, a condition that some people uh, can develop. And, and so he had that condition, but he kept refusing because he's like, ah, I don't know. It doesn't seem I'm just, you know, maybe uh, just not feeling well. Maybe I've got the stomach flu. And it just went on for weeks and weeks and weeks until he finally went to the doctor and found out that he had this condition. And the doctor was basically saying, well, why didn't you come like four weeks ago? You know, you've, I mean, yeah, it's great that you've lost like 50 pounds, but, but really, why? Why wait so long? Well, I don't think I need it. So many of us are like that. 
We don't think we need the great physician, but we do. We need to encounter Jesus. Religious person, you need Jesus. I need Jesus. Follow him. You know, we always say, yeah, we need to leave our sin behind to follow Jesus. Well, maybe some of us need to leave our righteousness behind. Not God's righteousness. I'm talking self-righteousness. Where it's, yeah, they need Jesus. They need forgiveness. They need a new life. I just need a little bit of help. Self-righteousness. We need to leave that behind. But everyone is invited to follow Jesus and fellowship with him. But everyone needs to understand, we all need to understand that we all will need to leave something behind. A sinner needs to leave his sin behind. A righteous person needs to leave their righteousness behind. We all, when we're called to follow Jesus, we're all going to need to leave something behind. Everybody. Now, in this passage, you know, our culture loves the part about Jesus, and it's true, we should love this part, about Jesus is expanding the kingdom, that all different types of people are welcome into God's kingdom. No matter where you've been, again, people of all tongues, tribes, and nations, we like that part, but one of the things we don't like is the repentance part. Because you know why the kingdom is open to every person, no matter where they've been, no matter where they're from, is because we all need to repent. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are all equal at the foot of the cross. So our culture likes that part. The kingdom is wide open to everyone. But what we don't like is that part. But yeah, and you'll need to drop something in order to follow me. You'll need to leave something behind. You will need to repent of something. Most of the time, when pe- people would understand, if we talk to the general culture, yeah, the Pharisees, they're no more righteous than the tax collector. Everyone would, would understand that. And then, therefore, the conclusion would be, yeah, so we're all fine. So, therefore, we're all fine. No, the Bible comes up with the opposite conclusion, and that is, yeah, we're all messed up. So, therefore, we all need the great physician. Whether we're religious or not religious, we all need healing. We all need the great physician. And here's the thing. When you go to the great physician, you're going to be called to leave your sickness behind. Right? So it's like that guy who had that tick-borne illness. The doctor, he had been sick for a while. The doctor got him to the point where he was no longer sick. He was no longer, and I won't go into the details of his sickness, but he was was able to actually hold food down. And he said, but the doctor said, all right, listen, though you're not going to be able to eat red meat anymore. You're going to have to, I've healed you, you're well, you're healthy, but you can't go back to that porterhouse. There's too much at stake. Um, (laughs) But the thing is, is we... (laughs) We all are going to, we all need to leave those things behind. If we're healed by the great physician, that means you, you leave those things. You leave them behind. So follow the physician. Follow the great physician for healing and forgiveness and leave those things behind. But come to the physician. We must. We must see the great doctor. Yes, that means you, you watching, you sitting here, you religious person. We need the great physician. And you might think, well, I, 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 I'm good. I've, I, I've, I've come to church and all this stuff. No, we, well, what about our symptoms? Why do we keep ignoring our symptoms? The, the symptom that, yeah, I'm interested in Jesus, but I'm not joyfully repenting and following him with all that I have. What about that symptom? Or what about the symptom of a heart that looks down on other people who don't look like you or act like you, assuming that, oh, they're not on my spiritual level. That, yeah, of course they need repentance, but they're not on my level. Those are symptoms of a heart that needs a healer. Do we have those symptoms? So let's play a, a mental exercise. That person that you didn't want coming to your Memorial Day barbecue. You remember that person at the beginning? You thought of people. You did. I did as well. Maybe you thought of me. Um, Well, again, let's say they throw a party of their own, and it's full of those types of people. Again, the ones you you just don't want to hang around. And they're 
saying, no, I, I want you to come to this party because, you know, a couple of days ago, I, I really started to believe in Jesus. Like, I've given my life to him, and so now I, I want to tell everybody. And so, yeah, you show up, but what do you do with those people? Do you look at them and assess, well, I'll, I'll be able to tell if they're real Christians once they start looking like me, once they start acting like me. Because, you know, the Pharisees, I'm sure that when Jesus was bringing some of these sinners and tax collectors to follow God, they probably thought, oh, man, you know, that's pretty good. They need more God. Of course, just look at them. Of, of course, they need more God. So maybe this is a good thing. But then when they didn't follow the Pharisees and all they thought, but they were following Jesus, later in the Gospels, what do we see? That the Pharisees are like, yeah, I guess not. Guess they're not righteous like us. Had, they had some promise. Jesus was making them more religious, but couldn't bring them the full distance. And we'll see that. Was, next week, we're going to talk about how Jesus confronted religious tradition and encountered these folks. But that's the, that was the Pharisees' attitude, I'm sure, of, oh, okay, a little more religious. Jesus might be doing a good thing. But they ended up killing Jesus, right? Because, no. They, he didn't, those sinners and tax collectors didn't quite follow the right way. Do we have some of that in our hearts? Do you recognize this symptom of a heart, a heart, again, a, a love, a caring, a concern, only for people that agree with you? That's not the heart of Jesus. The heart of Christ, Romans 5.8 it says, while we were still sinners, so sinners, that's a fancy word for, while we were still disagreeing with God, while we were still practicing things against God, Christ died for us. He gave his life for us. That's the heart of Christ, to die for those who disagree with you, to die for those who are not like you. So who don't you want to eat with? Who don't you want to come to your Memorial Day picnic. Jesus died for that person. The person you don't want to show up, Jesus showed up for them and gave his life. Now, hopefully, as you read these scriptures, as I do, you're feeling conviction by the Spirit, realizing that, man, I got some symptoms in my heart. And maybe it's the, I'm interested in Jesus, but not this, leave all my stuff behind and follow Jesus and, and get new life from him. I've got that heart symptom. I need a healer. I need the great physician. Or maybe you are seeing that self-righteousness in yourself where, yeah, other people certainly need Jesus, but you don't see it in yourself. Or that feeling of, yeah, if, if everyone would just be like me, then they would all be following Jesus. And so hopefully, if you have any of those symptoms, you're, you're feeling conviction, you're feeling the need, as I do, for the great physician. And the good news is, hey, self-righteous person, religious person, he died for you too. Jesus died for you too. Jesus died for the sinner, and he died for the righteous person. He is calling us to follow him closer. He is calling, just as uh, some of the Pharisees took note of Jesus and were following him, though secretly. We too, whether we're religious, whether we're a sinner, we all need to leave stuff behind and follow Jesus. And the good news is, la di da everybody can follow Jesus. He's calling to you, both righteous and sinners. And all of us can rejoice so that instead of standing outside of Christ's kingdom, when, when those are streaming in to eat the great banquet at the end of, of, of time, we're not standing outside because of our self-righteousness. We're not standing outside because of our sin. We'll all be rejoicing because everybody will be there based on God's grace through Christ. We'll all be there because the great physician healed our sin-sick souls. Everyone will be there because of that. 
and we can rejoice in that if we'd follow him today. So follow him. Follow him. Leave your righteousness behind. Leave your sin behind. Leave that self-centeredness behind. That self-centeredness that assumes that, that you're right and you're righteous and everyone else, they need to get with the program that you wrote. No, leave all that behind and throw a party for Jesus because he has died for your sins. Because the truth is, heaven will be full of people very different than you. People who you would not have picked. People who you would not have invited, but Jesus picked. Jesus invited. Jesus died for them. And in that, we can rejoice because you know what? If we're one of those people, he died for us. We were one of the people. We are one of those people. But some would say, I wish he wouldn't show up. And yet, Jesus, if he's calling you, if you've placed your faith in him, he has picked you. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. But Christ has called us. Now let us leave our sin behind. Let's leave our righteousness behind and encounter him anew because that's his invitation. And so let's rejoice with one another. Let's actually rejoice that God's calling and his, Christ's sacrifice is bigger than any one of us so that we rejoice that there's going to be people far different than me. And then if, if you see that in your heart, let's pray. Let's pray that God would heal our hearts so that we would reflect him and how we treat other people as well. Let's pray. Dear God, we do confess that we cling to our sin, we cling to our righteousness, instead of clinging to your sacrifice, to your righteousness. God, I thank you that you saved a sinner. As Chrissy confessed, I confess you saved a sinner like me. But Lord, it's not something you did, it's something you're doing. And so we pray that we would continue to leave those things behind. Lord, we lift up our hearts to you and confess, Lord, we are often only caring and loving to people just like us. But Lord, do a work in us. May we reflect your love. And Lord, for those who need to leave everything behind, who need to say for the first time, yes to you, God. You're calling them like you called Levi, like you called Peter. I pray that your spirit would, would work in them and they would say yes, yes to you, God. I'm going to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. And Lord, for us who have made that decision, would you give us hearts, hearts for people who are not like us, wanting them to run after you, not run after us, not become like me, but become like you. Lord, work in us a heart, a new heart, a heart of joy, a heart of love, and a heart for those, Lord, who we wouldn't pick. But thank you, God, that you pick them, you pick us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're able, would you please stand for our closing hymn?
Jesus will lead me home when we Shining as the sun We've no less days To sing God's praise Than when we first begun Amazing grace Amazing grace That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. If you're a Christian, that's your story, right? That it's only by God's amazing grace that we're going to be in his presence. No matter how religious or not religious or or how righteous or sinful you were, we're all in God through his amazing grace. So let's go in that. Dear God, we go in your power and your grace, the grace that we receive so abundantly. Lord, may we show that to others, others that are different from us, but Lord, we're all the same in that we need, we're redeemed, we're become, we become your children by your amazing grace. Lord, we go rejoicing in your grace. We go wanting to share your grace with every person we come in contact with. Amen. 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 Go in his amazing grace.